Is it worth it to try and become a machinist in 2022? In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of choosing this particular occupation. We're gonna get into compensation, we're gonna get into jobs, we're gonna get into demographics, uh, illnesses, and more. All to help you figure out whether this occupation is for you. Machinists set up and operate a variety of computer-controlled and mechanically-controlled equipment. They produce precision metal parts, instruments, and tools. Machinists have to be able to read detailed drawings or files such as blueprints, sketches, and CAD documents. They set up, operate, and disassemble manual, automatic, and computer numerically controlled, or CNC, machines. Sometimes they need to calculate dimensions or tolerances using instruments such as micrometers or calipers. But these days, a lot of the work is automated, often, Machinists are programming computers or electronic instruments. While the machine is at work, they're monitoring the feed and speed of machines. Machinists need to be experts in using lathes, milling machines, grinders, and other machine tools. This is a great occupation for someone that enjoys working with their hands. But there is quite a few other occupations out there for someone with this kind of interest. Do you know that there's over a thousand occupations out there? If you're having trouble choosing a career or occupation, we have you covered. Choose the right career is a seven step process. We go from 1000 potential occupations to that one right career for you. We take a look at your interests, your personality, your values, where you want to live and more to get to that one right career for you. Choosing the wrong career can cost you thousands of dollars and a lot of time. Choose the right career. Check out the link below for more details. And for a limited time, use coupon code YouTube dash sub for 10% off. So one of the complaints about becoming a machinist is actually the illness rate. If you actually go to the BLS website, they actually say one of the cons of choosing this particular occupation is the fact that people get injured and people can get sick on the job. This actually isn't the case. Recently in 2020, the Bureau of Labor Statistics did a survey and they actually found that the injury and illness rate for machinists was about 101 per 10,000 whereas the average occupation is about 120. So machinists actually experience less injuries and illnesses than the average occupation. Now, as for what kind of injuries and illnesses actually affect machinists, in 2020, there was about 363,000 machinists. We'll, we'll get into the labor market a little bit later in the video, but there was about 1,000 sprains, 340 cuts, and 240 fractures among a pretty giant occupation. So the chances of getting injured on, in this particular job are actually pretty low compared to the average occupation. An occupation that has a crazy amount of injuries, psychiatric techs, they get assaulted all the time. So what kind of education do you need to become a machinist? This is the latest data from the Occupational Information Network. They did a survey of machinists. They found that 36% have a high school diploma or GED. About 33% have a high school diploma plus some kind of certificate, and 17% have some college. This is a big advantage. Machinists don't have to go to college. They don't have to go get an associate's degree. They can pretty much begin working immediately, meaning they don't have a huge amount of debt like a lot of college students. And speaking of money, how well do machinists do financially? What kind of compensation can machinists expect? Well, compared to other occupations for where people are working with their hands, machinists do, they do okay. In 2020, the average base salary before overtime for machinists was $47,800. This was more than auto mechanics. This was more than welders, but it was less than say, becoming a plumber, becoming an electrician, becoming an elevator mechanic, those guys do really well, or an aircraft mechanic. So there's definitely some other occupations where you're working with your hands where you your base salary is gonna be a little bit more. Now for every single one of these occupations, especially if they're in a union, they get time and a half overtime. This is how a lot of these people tend to boost their pay. They, they have their base salary, they have their benefits, their vacation, their possible pension, depending on if they're in a union or not, but they boost their income via overtime. Machinists have seen okay wage growth over the years. In the year 2000, the average base salary was $31,610. By 2020, it rose to $47,800. So the base salaries haven't been increasing too much over the years, increasing by about $16,000 over a period of two decades. Now, where you live, and this is one of the advantages to being a machinist, and we'll actually get into a map of where all the jobs are. One of the advantages to being a machinist is a lot of the jobs are in pretty uh, cheap areas to live. So 50K might not go very far in, say, New York City or San Francisco or Boston, 
But that's not where the machinist jobs are. They tend to be in more rural areas. And according to the government, the highest paying state in 2020 for machinists is actually the final frontier state, the state of Alaska. The average base salary for a machinist in Alaska was around $65,000 per year base before overtime. Next up, let's get into the demographics of machinists. What kind of people actually become machinists? And this is one of the most male-dominated occupations out there. There's very few occupations, even in the trades, that are this male-dominated. According to the current population survey in 2020, 96% of machinists are male. And this is one of the most extreme for all occupations. There's very few occupations that have such a high male to female ratio. Next, we're going to get into the jobs market. Now, as for machinist jobs, this is one of the cons of becoming a machinist. The Great Recession had a huge influence on the employment prospects of machinists. In the year 2000, there was around 420,000 employed machinists. This dipped in the early 2000s, hit a low in 2005 of 361, went back up to about 420, dipped again during the Great Recession, and it's kind of been stagnant ever since, reaching about 360,000 employed in 2020. This is the result of outsourcing. This is the result of everything being made in China these days. Machinist employment Prospects have definitely been hurt over the past two decades. Another way to look at the demand for machinists is to go to job boards. I usually look at Glassdoor, Indeed, and LinkedIn.com, and I look at job postings in the United States. So I searched for machinist on Glassdoor.com. I found 12,269 job postings on Indeed, 19,359 job postings, and on LinkedIn, 18,377 job postings. So there's definitely job postings out there for machinists, but there's just not as many, especially compared to some of the other trades. If you watch some of my other trade videos, there's definitely some a little bit higher demand for, say, plumbers and electricians right now over machinists. But one big advantage to becoming a machinist is the fact that, like I said earlier, some of the jobs are in pretty low cost areas. According to the government, there's a lot of job opportunities in the state of Texas, in the state of Illinois, and kind of in the Rust Belt. So yes, there's also job opportunities in California. California is not a cheap place to live, but potentially you could get a machinist job in the Lone Star State, in Illinois, and other lower cost of living places around the Rust Belt, like Pittsburgh. Finally, let's get into personality type. A lot of people, when they're trying to choose a future career or occupation, they take a Myers-Briggs personality test, and then they try to compare their type to people in different occupations. They're trying to figure out would this occupation be compatible based off my personality? So the most common Myers-Briggs type found within this particular occupation is actually the ISTJ, no surprise here. It's also known as the inspector. There's also the ESTJ, the director, ISTP, the crafter, and ESTP, the persuader. Notice that all of these occupations have a preference for sensing over intuition and they tend to have a preference for thinking over feeling. So if you take a Myers-Briggs personality test and you come up with similar, similar results, you might really enjoy working with other machinists because you have similar personalities and you might enjoy, potentially enjoy the work based off the choices of other people. So those are some pros and cons of choosing this particular occupation. If you enjoyed this video, I definitely have some other videos on some of the other trades such as plumbers, electricians, getting, potentially becoming a contractor and more. There's definitely a lot of content on my YouTube channel about the trades. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.